Good day, everyone. My name is Srikant Acharya. I'm the chairperson of the East Sink Alliance. Today's topic, East Sink Alliance and COVISA collaborate to standardize automotive data from the cloud to the edge device. Our presentation today will describe the eSync Alliance efforts of standardizing a bidirectional pipeline, from, which includes OTA updates and data aggregation from the server to the edge device, involves three areas. One is specifying the architecture and behavior of the server client agent model. API definition for server to client and client to agents, and specifying the data gathering parameters and formats for agents. Covis, on the other hand, is building a standardized vehicle catalog, a database, to distinguish and access data from diverse sources in the vehicle. Specifying a data structure for each edge ECU or vehicle domain. Today's presentation describes the collaboration between these two activities, specifying the exchange of data between the catalog and the pipeline through layers on. Today's agenda. So we'll start with the introduction to COVISA, followed by an introduction to eSync Alliance. Then we will describe the liaison that is happening with a, a use case, and then our conclusions and looking forward. Let me describe to you the origins of COVISA. It started as Genevi in 2009 with a focus on in vehicle infotainment transitioned into vehicle data and cloud connectivity, launched a common vehicle interface initiative in collaboration with W3C. And then this year changed its name to COVISA. And COVISA of course stands for Connected Vehicle Systems Alliance. It'll continue to make the efforts to expand CVII and that collaborative effort. The scope is in vehicle, on edge, and in the cloud. Activities support automotive and adjacent industries. Example insurance, which has a great deal of interest in automotive data. And also technology and business model discussions that define future of mobility. Now, what is a common vehicle interface initiative? Just historically, it started in 2020 between Genevi, which is the old name, and W3C to unify the trends and interests and in ongoing efforts. What does it outline? Creating a foundation for vehicle data-driven architectures define and share common data definitions and service APIs. And finally, standardization that allow, allow you to reduce the fragmentation complexity and increase efficiency in how data can be exchanged. So CDII is really about harmonizing across industry organizations and consortia. Now, just to give a perspective as to how expanded the initiative has become over the years and how COVISA and ESIC Alliance play a part in some of those initiatives. Now, it starts with the CEI initiative. There is a um, breakdown into the tracks. From there, it ends up into many activities and projects. And we form a small portion of the activities and they are outlined. The single lines into 
two aspects. One is the catalog and also the signal specification. Now, a little about vehicle signal specification. So the background is what it's a four and a half, four to five years of research. The current version is version 2.2 and fully open license. And what does it do? Define model for vehicle data definition, unify the common data types, develop and publish tools, support extensibility and innovation. So what is the current status? The current status is VSS extensible using layers. There is an ontology map that has been built, supports connecting data applications, refine and remove data duplication. And some of this initiative has found itself in production vehicles and also as a protocol specification under W3C. So you can see it's starting to harmonize, making itself uh, prevalent in the standards. Now, the whole idea is to find a common data model. Even if you don't, if you are dealing with um, what I call legacy data sets, and of course, new ones will always follow that. So if you can see the legacy data sets have are come in a three different forms, formats that are defined under JSON, formats that just carry a header descriptor with the data followed. And then of course, something like a Microsoft defined um, DTDL format. So these are all different kinds of things that exist in legacy today. But in the going forward portion, which is on the right hand side, they are trying to use the data catalog and the common data model. So going forward, the path is very clear, but there is also a path to bring conformance to data that exist today in different formats. Now to give a flavor as to what we are talking about. So this is a vehicle data structure that is outlined in the, in the standard catalog. It's quite extensive. It defines one for each ECU and you can find something that you all can relate. Now let me take one example like this. For an electric vehicle, you'll have a definition such as this power train, power source, um, we will try to take this as an example and try to expand it into the next slide. So here we are talking about a vehicle signal specification syntax, a VSpec file. So in this, we are defining the electric motor in which we are giving you a couple of instances of a da data attribute um, and a sensor. And these define two parameters, one is the elect vehicle power, train, power source, max regenerative power, and the motor coolant temperature. Now that we have defined what the basics of what VSS data catalog, the data structure, now we go on to define what is the e-sync data pipeline. We are trying to solve an industry challenge. What is the challenge? The challenge is existence of over a dozen way to update ECUs. Now, some are OEM related. So OEMs themselves can define their own updating mechanism, which are unique to that platform. You have tier ones that have their own ways of updating. I mean, Bosch has one, Continental has one, and there can be several others who have their own method for updates. As if that's not enough, you have the OS themselves have a prescribed way of getting updated. You have Android, you have Linux, you have QNX, and then all these operating systems seem to define their own methods for updating. Now let me add another level of complexity. So each of these tier ones have to adjust or modulate 
and change the software to reflect the OTA mechanism of a given o OEM. So let's say, let's take a powertrain, you, see, you know, it's gone to six different OEMs. So I have to maintain six different versions of the software for the same part there. Now, I suppose if I have 800 different parts that have a similar problem, it just increases the skew of software that I have to manage. And you can see it, it reflects an increased cost and ultimately the consumer pays for that cost. So what is the solution for all of this? Solution is to standardize. And how? And standardization is through creating a common specification for vehicle updates, for ECU updates. Now, if that is possible, then uh, I can bring any ECU to an OEM and OEM could say, if this conforms to the Async Alliance Async Agent spec, I know how to, it is updated. Doesn't matter whether it's a power train or a brake controller, infotainment system, I know how to update it. If OTA ready systems can be brought that can work in harmonious uh, with each other, in harmony with each other, then it substantially reduces the cost. And it's a spec that is well understood, defined, and that's how we start to begin reducing the uh, complexity, increasing efficiency, all the words that we have talked about in the previous slides. Now, as you can see, these are the representative member, members of the Ising Alliance. And you can see there's a, there's a large focus by the tier ones themselves to come and standardize their update mechanisms. But there, this is not just these tier ones, there is OEM, there are semiconductor companies that are also part of the Alliance who are doing their work in the background. Let's talk a little bit about the ESING bidirectional data pipeline. So you can clearly see that there is a cloud. There is the vehicle, which has a client. And then there is the agent. And you have the server client APIs. Both do updates as well as data gathering. These server client agents are scalable to any number of edge devices because of the way they have been architected. Async itself is agnostic to the cloud infrastructure or the device operating system or the payload or data format. And in the last two years, it has been in production with six OEMs worldwide. And these OEMs are Europe, China, Japan. So it's not like it's confined to one region. It's quite a worldwide acceptance. Let's look at what we are trying to focus in Async Alliance. And the Async is Alliance, we are trying to provide compliance. Compliance means interoperability, which means how we can work to make all devices talk to each other and in a very prescribed manner. And this conforms to the architecture, the minimal feature spec, and the APIs. Now, these APIs define how the compliance can be driven for servers, agents, and clients. And they can come from different sources. What we have recognized in the Alliance is that you want to democratize the process, which means you don't have to get it from one single source, the whole end-to-end -end system. So you can get it from different uh, suppliers, so long as they are compliant products. Similarly, the Alliance also focused on existing infrastructure. OEMs have existing infrastructure. How do you take an existing infrastructure and without them having to spend and re-engineer stuff, clearly bring it in a, what I call a staged manner so that they can actually start to benefit from the standardization efforts. So, there is a prescription how to bring existing infrastructure into play. Let me give you a few examples of the APIs. Now, we have taken some selection, and these are from our vehicle database to OTA campaigns to 
operations of the end devices. They are REST APIs, you can see, and there are more that are being uh, drawn today for the, between the lines to figure out how the data aggregation will take place. Now let's look at the eSync Alliance view of the ecosystem. Now the ecosystem has, now this is classically how all OTA architectures reflect them. So they should have a campaign way of organizing a campaign, organizing policies, encryption, Delta updates, compression, assembling components, and also when things fail, to provide rollbacks. So if I have to expand these a little bit, so let me organize. The cybersecurity and vehicle regulations are extremely important. There are several standards bodies, many are government funded. And here there are a few names we can put as representations of them. UNEC WP2020 is quite prevalent and, and visible. Of course, there is the, in the USA and HTSA, then you have the INST, NIST, and then ITU, X31373. There are cloud providers. Of course, the three big names in the US. And then there are several big names in China too, like Baidu and Tencent. There are other efforts that are happening about hybrid cloud as well. You have these applications that providers that provide fleet analytics, fleet software, fleet data, and there are several such companies. You have these third-party companies like Akamai that are providing CDN services. With the advent of 5G, there is MEC, you have trusted registries. Then inside vehicle, there is a gateway, there is a domain architecture, and there is a zonal architecture, which is a new upcoming uh, way of architecting vehicles. Then finally, it's partnership, standardization projects, liaison activities between OEMs, tier ones, consortia. This actually comprises how we see the ecosystem around us. Now, how do you get started? So you have to find some kernel that can allow companies to extract value through the process. So the Alliance has created an easing SDK. And what does it have? It provides a functional server account. It provides a downloadable easing software available in Linux provides a source code of a template agent that you can create and um, modify for your specific devices and provides extensive documentation for OTA update process, how to write agents and policies. How does it start? So we have outlined a series of steps, steps one to nine. Step one is SDK, sharing, file sharing server that customer draws, and that has documentation and a zip file. Then, then that can expand into creating your test environment with the agent, with the download and the connection to the server. And of course, then the process of actually authentication from the server to your device, checking the new updates, downloading new updates, informing the server about the progress of the installation. And then when the installation is complete, provide a success metrics back to the server. Now that we have defined what is eSync Alliance and its activities, let me bring focus to the eSync Alliance and its liaison activities with Covison. And I, I'll also describe a use case. Liaisons happen because there's a lot of background work that has continued to happen even before a liaison happens. So in this uh, 
effort, Easing Alliance and COVISA have been working a lot in informal gatherings at CES, at Detroit. And as a result, we have brought in a level of understanding and cohesion in our thought processes that led to creating a liaison to provide greater focus and formality. And so the initial focus is the CVI initiative and the, and the East Things data gathering. And the goal is to develop APIs for the automotive industry standard, common data model, common service catalog. And so there is a focus. And what's the focus is this having this regular cadence of joint technical discussions, eventually creating a demonstrator and proof of concept projects. So the opportunity for a joint demonstrator and POC. So what COVISA provides is a focus on the vehicle signal spec, standardizing in vehicle data formats. Of course, they are described in YAML and that this gives you data types, variable and so on. And in the case of the Async Alliance, you have the opportunity, data opportunity. And in this case, we have taken a special use case for the OTA data metrics, update metrics between the server and the client, the client and the agent, agent to the device. And so you're building it right from ground up back to the server. So we wanted to take a real world example. So what are, what is, what we all are concerned about. For example, you are very concerned about the performance of your whole update system. So you obviously one of the measures that you will take is how to measure time of update to the edge and it's travel back to the server. You can set up an experimentation in an environment to measure and validate such metrics. Now, there are many factors in OTA performance. Now the server itself, you could say, hey, what's the sign on time? What's the upload time for your packages? How do you create campaigns, generate Delta files, deploy across geographies? There's a lot of parameters that you could track for server performance. And then there is the client. The client will, for example, it authenticates uh, to the server at the start so that we could say what is your startup time for a, a client, uh, how much time it takes to download updates, manage service interruptions, verify updates, check policies. And then if there is a issue of rollback, you could even do a metric on a rollback. What about the agent? So agents typically have, uh, may have secure, uh, module, hardware security module. Uh, so it'll take some time to decode that. So what is the decode time there? What is a policy uh, enactment time? Uh, how much time it takes to reconstruct deltas? Um, update, how much time for updates? How do you mitigate failures and rollback? And all these are metrics that are real world and very much relevant to any OEM. So what we are trying to do is a confluence as to how to bring the data, data gathering architecture that's described in the missing alliance and how do you harmonize with what VSS catalog and VSS signal specification is all about. So how do you bring it all together? So you take the, the easing server client agent model and then you take the agent construct and create the VSS library and embed there. So that when you bring the uh, data out of the agent, it's already conforming to some format standardization that VSS wants. Now, if we can generate data that already conforms to such formats, imagine that you don't need a translation at the edge, at the top, sorry, at the cloud edge, where you have to transfer data to, to the VSS catalog. So a liaison activity allows you to think of ways of simplifying the process and create harmony. 
Now to outline an example. So you have the vehicle infrastructure, vehicle to infrastructure metrics, and this could be authentication and connection times, type of networks, because the speed may impact if it's a 4G or a 5G or a Wi-Fi, because each one has a certain, uh, what I call bandwidth. What is the type of cloud, payload size, download times, and retries. And what are the vehicle metrics? So SHA is our secure hash verification time, encryption decryption times, in vehicle network speed, scan is a slow network, LIN is even slower, FlexRay is uh, a faster network, most and so on. And of course, Ethernet is the fastest. Now you can define payload size, policy check times, transfer times, Delta reconstruction, and these are all what I call, we have set up as a metric for our own evaluation. And this is what we are going to evaluate. Now, we have created, now we, several slides before we created the VSpec, which was using the electric motor as an example. Now we are creating a VSpec file for the agent to bring out data in conformance to what uh, the VSS catalog wants. And, here we are giving the type instead of an attribute. Type here is a branch. Um, and we are describing details of different OTA metrics. Now, what are all these OTA metrics? So we, this can be further explained in the next slide. So you have these organization uh, of the metrics. And there is, for example, vehicle, children, and general has ODA metrics, and ODA metrics has further children, which can be brought into V2X metrics, client, agent, and external metrics. Now I, I can go further down by expanding the OTA metrics to the V2X metrics. And so I have a whole list of signals that the VTS metrics uh, creates. Now I can go further down and expand one more thing. In this case, I'm expanding the client metrics and the client's children would be client's uh, SHA verification, client SHA verification error, time, transfer time, transfer retries, all this becomes. So you can actually keep breaking this down in a tree form and you can go and add all this information. And that's what we are trying to put together as part of our project. Now, Having described how what Covisa is currently doing, what eSync Alliance is doing, and how our liaison activities are coming together, we want to figure out what has been accomplished and what we want to look to the future of standardization. So it's clear there are several standards that are emerging for connected vehicles and including connected devices. So we need to create harmony so that we are not reinventing the wheel time and time again. The liaison allows us to create a way for transfer of data that can go from the base, from the device itself to something that the applications can use. And then of course, we are going to collaborate on building this vehicle catalog to be more diverse as we had talked about. So we'll create use cases, we'll create um, a simulator library of devices and so on and so forth. Now, how do you look into the future? There will be several other areas in which the Alliance is looking to collaborate. And in one such area is this autonomous driving software which is being driven by Automat Foundation and open source development community. So you have two ways to look at it. One is upcoming bodies to which you need to liaison, but we also have to see what existing standards already exist. And is there a way to conform to what they have already prescribed because there are devices using those standards and the classic is AutoSAR. And so where we are, where things are starting to evolve, we start to do liaison, where th things have been defined, you've tried to figure out a way to make them all work because you have Android devices, you have 
uh, Ethernet based devices, RTOS based devices, and then you have a bunch of AutoSAR based devices. And all of this are in the car and we all have to address them. So now this brings to me the conclusion of my uh, presentation. And thank you. And I'm looking forward to answering your questions. <laughs>